All right, we're going to check this one out. The Depressing Truths Behind Man vs. Wild. Uh, anybody who doesn't know, it's Bear freaking Grills. Let's get it. I didn't know it was this fake. That comment was posted to an early expose of Man vs. Wild Season 1 Episode 5. While Bear Grylls' other survival missions have featured everything from rented horses to volcanic landscapes created by smoke we went down to Farmer Joe, got some horses, machines. Huh? We're gonna go over every available example where Bear Grylls might not have been telling the truth, including multiple responses from the man himself, so you can come to your own conclusion about whether or not the show was real. A TV survivalist caught cutting corners. This was the first example of Bear Grylls being called out for fakery and it came on the 24th of July 2007, just four days after the end of the first season. The article was written after Mark Weinert, one of the show's consultants, came forward to talk about the ways in which the first season- Hell hath no fury like an ex-producer, you know what I'm saying? was staged. Mark began by explaining that while in the Sierra Nevada mountains, Grills was seen supposedly sleeping under a rock beside a small life-saving fire. On this little overhang here, here's all I've really got now. Our shelter for the night. It's not very nice. Yet in all actuality, Grills instead spent each night at the Pines. Oh, he scammed y'all. Y'all. <laughs> he was staying at the freaking... I've never stayed in a place as nice in my entire life, and he just, this looks like he's hes living at a Bass Pro Shop. Resort in Bass Lake, oh, which was no. advertised as a cozy getaway for families, and is a luxurious hotel with its own spa on a lake, as well as television. Bro, that hotel looked like it had its own lake, not its own spa, it had a whole ass lake stone fireplaces, hot tubs, and internet access. However, this isn't the only part of the episode which has since been exposed as fake. Only a few minutes yeah. after waking from the campsite which he apparently didn't even sleep at, Grills runs into a group of wild Mustang before talking about how unusual it was to see them out in the wild. A chance to use an old Native American- <laughs> There's Dorothy, there's Kentucky, we got Chitty Chitty Bang Bang over here. Mode of transport oh God, comes my way. Bro, they imported them from Arabia. Let me tell you something about this guy. I actually, I know it's fake. It's got to be fake. It's all, I mean, there's so many people proving it, but he has good content, right? He has fantastic content in the sense that it's captivating to watch and very cinematic. You're not going to learn shit from it, but I mean, it's kind of like watching National Geographic and you know, getting to see all the pretty sights and things like that. So, it's, I mean, it's good content for what content is. But is it survival content? No. He's just a master at making thumbnails. This is such a... Thank you. I did. He rang his bells 50 times and I let him out 50 times. And he, guess what? It didn't have to go poop, ever. Okay, I'll clean it. Yeah. So, mm. No, I don't. I tried a lot of times. But what? I'm telling you, I really hope he doesn't develop a habit of doing it. Um, because now it's like in the middle of the night. I'm like, okay, so does he think he can just shit when he wants to? What? <laughs> um, but when you're done like with all this, I'm gonna give you your present that I found. Okay. It's kind of like, what the fuck? But yeah. at the same time, it's kind of cool. <laughs> privilege to see that probably loose horses that have broken free maybe from a ranch. He spends the next couple of minutes gaining the trust of the wild horses oh, before not... trying to jump oh my god he's gonna try to onto one without success which is interesting as according to a reddit post what is this? Wild Mustang was actually a choreographed scene with a domesticated horse. Let's Bear Grylls breaking a wild Mustang was actually a choreographed scene shot with a domesticated horse from a nearby oh ranch. The post included a video which has sadly now been deleted, yet there are comments on other websites to back up the claim such as Let's the wild horse. It was apparent when watching Man vs. Wild that some things were not as factual, such as when Bear walks right up to what's supposed to be a wild horse. <laughs> the wild horse in America West are uncombed, skittish, wild creatures with scrapes and cockleburs. I have no idea what a cockleburr is. But uh, not the gentle manicure saddle horse, which was seen in that episode. That's true. So what he's saying is like they're all mangy. That being said, Man vs. Wild was very interesting or entertaining. So that's what I meant. It's good content. It's entertaining. 
and did provide some very useful survival tips. If you're looking for a factual survival setting, check out some of the true non-fiction books. He's like, bro, go elsewhere. Horses in the American West are uncombed, skittish, wild creatures with scrapes and cockle burrs, not the gentle manicured saddle horse which was seen in that episode. Alongside YouTube comments such as, I grew up near Reno, Nevada, and spent a lot of time watching wild horses. The proof that he never roped a wild horse, he's still alive. That is so true. Okay, I'm sorry, I had to pause, but let me tell you a story. I used to live in Queen Creek, Arizona. We used to have we used to have a horse, but then we got that horse from a horse rancher down the way, and he was, you know, and this was a this was not a wild Mustang, right? Like this was this was a combed, like she was a pretty girl looking thing, and he was, you know, rubbing her butt, you know, petting her butt, whatever. And what happened was, is she bucked him. So, like, not, like, he wasn't on her and bucked off, but he was standing behind, right in his chest. Bopped him with her two feet. Just freaking double kick. Like, freaking, uh, like a Street Fighter 6 move. My guy ended up in the ICU for six weeks. He had a bruise on here, I think, for half of a year. It was the biggest bruise I've ever seen. To that day, I'm terrified of horses. I fucking hate those things. On top of this, Mark Weiner then explained that Season 1 Episode 9, in which Grills is supposedly surviving on a scarce desert island, was actually filmed off the coast of Hawaii, where Grills spent his evenings in a motel. During the same episode, Grills can be seen making a bamboo raft on the beach, which even included a fish. This is like, uh, this is like, um... What's his name? Adam Sandler, when he does a movie just to go on a vacation. He's, Bear Grylls has got to figure it figured out. My guy knows what he's doing. My brother in Christ knows exactly what he is doing. And I applaud that shit. I applaud it. Fishnet sale. Yet this was also debunked after Weiner explained <laughs> he actually led a team of builders to construct the raft. It was then taken apart so that Grills could be shown building it on camera. He went to Ikea and got himself a raft. Oh uh, no. However, it was season one, episode five on Mount Kilauea that was the most suspicious of them all. At the beginning of the episode, Grills was supposedly walking on an active volcano shown by sulfur dioxide. I have actually walked near a real volcano. You see how it's all smoky like that? I already know that's not real. I'm not even a volcano expert. I swear to God that that smoke isn't real. Gas which was steaming from the surface. Sulfur dioxide gas forms in volcanoes, and here it's really thick. Look at sulfur this, you can actually see the gas. sulfur dioxide here seeping out of these vents. However, after the episode went live, one of the show's safety instructors explained to the Sunday Times that the white clouds of poisonous sulfur dioxide that billowed around the former SAS Explorer were in fact harmless vapor created by smoke machines. I told you, bro, I, kn I told you. I wasn't lying. I've actually been near a volcano. That ain't real. And it was at like an active volcano. That shit was fake. Because I didn't see no smoke. There, the, the ground doesn't fart, bro. And also, let me see what he says. According to insiders, the red glow of the molten magma, which would have incinerate him in seconds. <laughs> My guy, he, he had a cookout, made some ribs, and then used hot coals to make a video. That's crazy. And according to insiders, the red glow of the molten magma which he warned could incinerate him in seconds was supplemented by burning hot coals brought in by members of the production team. Sulfur dioxide <laughs> fumes are colorless and you can't see it, so smoke there generators we were used off screen to make the existing fumes yep. seem visible. Later yep. in the episode, Grills there talks about being far from you, civilization before explaining that crossing the terrain was dangerous due to lava cracks in the ground. Crossing these fragile fissures can be dangerous. But there is a way to do it. Sometimes you get these these lava bridges that cross them over, but you've got to be really, really careful crossing these just because you don't know what's solid and what's hollow underneath. However, when a YouTuber called Volcano Chaser uploaded a video <laughs> titled Rain Man vs. Wild Bear. All right, let me see the cameraman cross it now. Oh, God. Bear Grylls is a phony. <laughs> this segment was also deep. He's a big fat phony. Bunked. The video you showed phony? that just behind the camera, the lava crack came to an end and could have simply been walked around, which became even worse after it was shown that Grills was not far from civilization and was rather right next to a major highway. To add a cherry on top- He was off the I-85 filming all <laughs> 
No, these people. Okay, my guy is in the middle of the desert next to the highway. I 100% bet you they thought this guy was a Make-A-Wish kid. And he was on his final wish, looking autistic as fuck out there, crossing a, uh, crossing a little rock bridge. Oh my god, it's so sad. This is dark. That is... <laughs> Top of the cake. The video description exposed other parts of the episode by stating, Most of the scenes in the show don't exist in the area he was supposed to be in. Avocado trees, lava tube, tropical forest, fissures, and landing site are all in different parts of the island and separated by up to 50 miles. I've hiked this area hundreds of times. These fissures are unique to a small area on the summit and are a very popular tourist viewing area. They're only a few hundred feet long and easy to go around. Only the phony bear seems to have trouble crossing them. The fishes are located next to the parking area where cars can be seen on the crater rim drive shown on the clip, although there was still more trickery that wasn't being made obvious to the audience. He was caught in 4K. I guess 720p, whatever. But he was caught, and he got exposed by Volcano Chaser, bro. Survival <laughs> expert Nick Vrooman's worked with Egg Wars nah, on Season 1, Episode 13 in the Australian Outback, after which Nick stated that even the script itself was pre-planned. He'd expand on this by stating, everything you see in the show is set up. I built him shelters and found him snakes to oh, eat. No. On the show broadcast... The ex-producer's back. Hey, this is like when your girlfriend breaks up with you and says you had a tiny pee pee the whole time, exposes you. Oh no. All of a sudden you went from big dick to small dick real quick. Oh no. He getting exposed to Europe and the US, you see him catch a snake, kill it, and eat it. But it was actually two snakes. A roadkill that I found which he was shown beating on the head and eating, and then a live olive python that a wildlife carer had been rehabilitating, which was followed by Vrooman's also exposing the segment, where Grills was almost attacked by a crocodile, stating, the whole crew was petrified of the crocodiles. Bear didn't want to get anywhere near the water, so he filmed a setup of him like he was near a crocodile when he was actually a safe distance away. I was a bit miffed when I saw the finished show. As a result of the media ripping each episode to shreds, Bear Grylls was given a chance to respond to the controversy during a live talk show. And then we heard somebody complaining that they said, no, no, he's he's down the road at the Motel 6. He's he's not really out there surviving. <laughs> the way we look at his eyes. He looks away because he's like, oh, shit, I don't want to dance to this, man. I, don't, I just I just trying to make content. Film these things is over over six days, and um, and when I'm filming the live night stuff out, I'm out whether, you know, it's in a camel carcass or up a tree. Oh, he is he is the budget Steve Irwin, bro. He does it so good, man. He does it so good. Let me tell you something. The Australian slash British accent, they people associate that with like survival boys now because of you know Steve Irwin doing the animals. Everybody's like, oh man, they know what they're doing, you know, because they're out there in the outback. My guy's over here like, oh, crikey, mate, I was over here in the, you know, six days, 14 nights, and I was inside of a camel's asshole, uh, drinking animal dung, and, uh, yeah, I mean, they don't really know what it's like out here, mate. Fuck me. Mm -hmm. And then when we're not filming the light, night stuff, I'll stay with the crew, you know, wherever that is, whether it's in a, you know, tented camp area in the Sahara or... Tented camp or a hotel or a spa jungle lodge you know in a rainforest or whatever grills would then issue a public apology stating if people felt misled on how the first series was represented i'm really sorry for that <laughs> he added i'm the person that takes the rap for these things even though i'm not always involved in the editing side of it which is followed by the show promising to be 100 percent transparent going into the future to cover themselves the second season opened with a disclaimer however it's not like this did anything to convince viewers <laughs> He could do a survival show, and then, like, the last 30 minutes could be, like, when Gordon Ramsay did Hotel Hell. He goes in, and he remodels the hotel he's staying at after he survives for the first four hours. ...of the show's authenticity. If I had to choose one person to be stranded on a desert island with, it would be Bear Grylls. That way he would have his crew with him, and they'll probably pay for us to stay <laughs> in a nice hotel or something, which became even worse after the show was exposed for a different stunt. During the episode in the African savannah, Grylls is shown squeezing water out of elephant dung, which by itself didn't seem all that troublesome. However, when Canadian survival expert Les Stroud, host of the show Survivor Man, responded to That's the episode so in a gross. Reddit AMA, he debunked the strategy by stating, many of the actual survival skills- let's, re let's read this thing. I can only assume you mean in terms of survival and not film. I'm assuming asking about Barry Grylls. 
Uh, let's establish one thing first. He acts. They act. He puts they act because of his crew boys. I survive. As far as survival instruction and gimmick shown, I will speak only as a survival instructor, not the guy at first put on survival on TV. <clears throat> Many of the actual survival skills taught are bogus. It is not possible to squeeze drinkable water out of elephant tongue. <laughs> Well, it is when your cameraman is to squeeze drinkable, uh, soaked it with a bottle. Oh my God. Did he, here's the thing. I'll give him that episode. If he actually drank shit covered water, I'll give him that. That's, that's, that's like a Ripley's believe it or not shit. Others are pure TV stunt entertainment and do not relate to the real world of survival. So my professional opinion of Bear Grylls, as you have directly asked, is that he's a TV host. My guy is James Corden out there in the wild. <laughs> They hired for an individual show. I would even go as far to say that some of the skills. Okay, he's getting cucky wucky fuckied right now. This survival guy, Les Stroud, is pounding Bear Grylls' ass right now in ex exposure. That's wild. Girls taught a bogus. It's not possible to squeeze drinkable water out of elephant dung. Well, it is if your cameraman has soaked it with bottled water. I would even go so far as to say that some of the skills, if followed and attempted in a real survival situation, could result in worsening the situation. With this comment coming alongside a few instances of Lestra dissing Man vs. Wild for its lack of authenticity. <laughs> I was wondering if you've ever had. Bro, this is like Eminem versus MGK. <laughs> Les Stroud hit him with the kill shot, bro. Opportunity to meet Bear Grylls. I haven't, because I'm out overnight and there's nobody else out there. What are your thoughts on Bear Grylls? <laughs> <laughs> if you wanted to learn about archaeology, would you get it from Harrison Ford? A lot of fresh oh! water around here. It's a good thing, too. Otherwise, I'd be reduced to uh, probably having to drink my own pee. <laughs> yeah, right. There are YouTube videos yeah, as well right. as full blown <laughs> websites dedicated to the poor <laughs> advice that Bear Grylls is given, with many stating that this constitutes fakery, while others have made the point that Grylls was simply showing survival techniques and it therefore didn't matter if the shots were set up or not. It's a show to teach you how to survive certain scenarios. To have every survival stunt to be real every single episode would be both dangerous and illogical. That's fair. I mean, here's the thing. <clears throat> if you were to make a show 100% like you knew they were surviving, followed them for 24 hours, that'd be a boring ass show. Nobody's gonna watch that. Nobody's gonna look at that content. Nobody wants to watch some guy shit in the woods. Well, maybe some people wanna see that. But majority, you know, they, they want to get to the good part, right? Um, you know, in filming, they say, you know, in every two hours of filming, you can get 10 minutes of good film, right? So that's kind of what's happening here. There has to be some trust factor to it. Obviously, he's pushing the boundary of what is actually survival. Uh, and it's not at all, but... I, he I teaches see, survival say. techniques. It's obviously irrelevant if he's really facing those perils or not. The point is, it's entertaining and informative. <laughs> he was teaching people how to- He's Bill Nye the survival guy, man. <laughs> <laughs> if they were in that situation as if. He's not risking his life for a freaking TV show. Whether or not setting up the shots constitutes fakery is up for debate. He's However, a YouTuber by the name dog. of Lo The Show seems convinced that even when set up, a different Bear grill stunt is completely impossible. Eating a snake. Even with the guts and skin on, you can eat them straight like this. Not possible. Although in other episodes, Bear Grylls has shown himself eating snakes in their entirety, so I wouldn't call the video by Low the Show all that much of a debunk. However, if we want slightly better evidence, we have to look at a video posted by Justin Wallace titled Climber Cringe Bear Grylls Confirmed Top Roper. Justin, who's clearly an avid climber, spends the video criticizing an advertisement in which Bear Grylls is climbing a difficult route in Utah. Grylls is shown to be using all the wrong gear. Guess we're using the Mountaineers coil which you don't really do especially when you're track climbing in moab because it just kinks up your rope sorry bud but a single wire gate on your harness isn't gonna do much for you tying all the wrong knots what the I, I don't even know any of these climbing terms but it sounds like he's getting wrecked the hell not is that kind of looks like a bowling we learned that in the boy scouts bro but not really and even climbing the wall incorrectly i don't even see his last piece he's like 40 feet run out right there <laughs> you're gonna die man oh and there's so many good placements too what is he doing there's no way he is holding his body with <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
He, they got him in that Matrix shot. He's just flying, bro. He's just, he's. <laughs> I can't Wait, even... that one hand in that crack right there. And his two feet are just sticking out on nothing. His crew is- This guy is probably like, what in the Kentucky Fried fuck was that? Definitely pulling his fat ass up there on a three to one. There's no way he's climbing that. The original rock climbing video <laughs> has a dislike ratio of almost 75% and features comments such as, gotta give him credit for really committing to the <laughs> I agree, I agree, I'm not even mad. This is great. He, I mean, keep it up, man. That's crazy. He committed Interesting to skills he has in climbing. This is just ridiculous. Wow, it could be impressive if it was not fake. As a climber, it's obvious that the heli dropped him at the top and he made some shots rappelling down. I used to like him, disappointing. You could make the argument that Grills gets a pass given it was filmed for an advertisement, but does he get a pass for an article titled Bear Grills Show Accused of Fakery Again after the island's ordinary men exposed as trained professionals? According to the article, the island by Bear Grills introduced what was supposed to be 13 ordinary men are about to be abandoned on a Pacific island with just the clothes they stand up in and a few tools. But there was no mention that Rue Rupert Smith had worked in war zones in extreme environments, including alongside Grills as director of Channel 4's Escape to the Legion. Similarly, there was no introduction to cameraman Dan Etheridge, who also worked with Grills on Discovery Channel's Man vs. Wild. Kiff McManus, a sound recordist with 10 years experience in some of the world's most dangerous places, also failed to get a mention. The article also revealed that two Cayman crocodiles had been manually released onto the island, and that the rare source of fresh drinking water found by those on the show uh, was actually a rubber line pool set up by the production crew. Did that guy have Crocs on? Channel 4 responded to the featuring of trained professionals by stating, It clearly states in the program voiceover that trained crew are part of the experiment, living under the exact same conditions as the other men. Like all of the men on the island, their professions are captioned on screen and their backgrounds are discussed. Biographies are also on the Channel 4 <laughs> website. Before He's like, I'm going to bring real survival men with me. I don't want to die. Oh God. Going on to address the crocodiles and drinking water by stating, We had to ensure the island's only water supply, a muddy pool, would last through filming in the dry season, and that there was enough native animals and native vegetation that could sustain the men for 28 days, as long as they had the ingenuity to find it, catch it, and kill it, which you have to admit is a pretty decent statement. Pretty decent. Uh, good video. I mean, he was caught in 4K. Yeah, it, it's obvious.